Good morning, everyone. My name is Dan Rose. I'm the CEO of Limflow, which is a late-stage cardiovascular startup uh, based in Paris, but also with um, offices in San Jose, California. And the reason I'm here today is because we're in the third decade of the 21st century, and there's still hundreds of thousands of major lower limb amputations going on in the US, EU, and Japan due to ischemia and late-stage peripheral artery disease. So Limflow aims to become the global leader in limb salvage for patients with CLTI. We're going to do this by transforming the standard of care, introducing a new therapy and technology into the space, growing the treatable market, treating patients who can't be treated today with any surgical or endovascular option, and establishing a unique, durable, competitive position for the future. So the New England Journal of Medicine tells us that a major lower limb amputation is in the top five most uh, dangerous surgical procedures in terms of morbidity and mortality. Terrible outcomes for patients, happening too often, driven by uh, an explosion in CLTI, which comes from too much diabetes and too many obese patients combined with a lot of atherosclerosis and people surviving their coronary artery disease because we basically stent everyone. Well, if you have atherosclerosis in your coronaries, you're very likely to have it everywhere else in your body as well. Current therapies today are essentially adapted coronary technologies. So you think about wires, stents, balloons, catheters, et cetera. But revascularization only works if you have a target vessel to revascularize. And many patients, in many patients, their disease has progressed too far to be revascularized, leaving them essentially as non-responders, people who either cannot be revascularized or don't respond to revascularization. So independent research shows us that this is a couple billion dollar market, 100,000 patients alone for limb flow. We're the only people focused on this uh, target group, no option CLTI patients. What does that mean? It's patients who have a chronic wound in their foot, and this is, believe me, the nicest picture I could find you, and they have no acceptable vessels for revascularization. And in our pivotal trials, we have all the angios and pictures sent to an external committee to vascular surgeons that determine, yes, no further endovascular therapy can be delivered and no surgical option exists. So these patients are essentially consigned to major lower limb amputation. What are we doing? Something called transcatheter arterialization of the deep veins. The easiest way to understand the concept is you're driving to the airport, trying to catch your flight, you get stuck in traffic, uh, your app tells you you're going to get there tomorrow. You look over around, you look across the median, you say, wait a minute, that road on the other side of the highway, it goes to the airport. It just runs in the wrong direction. Veins come from everywhere arteries go. And in our patients, the arteries are unreconstructable, so why not try to deliver oxygenated blood through the venous system? It might not be as perfect as an artery, but we're certainly going to get blood flow down to the foot. Limflow is a breakthrough technology. It is a system of tools. We have an arterial catheter and a venous catheter for creating the connection between artery and vein. We have a unique push valvulatome for atraumatically knocking out the valves in the veins that otherwise keep blood flow from flowing in the wrong direction. And then we have uh, our own covered stent grafts, basically for channeling blood from artery into the veins and focalizing it down into the foot. So we just completed uh, a landmark pivotal trial called the POMIS-2 trial. It was 105 patients in 20 sites focused on extremely hard primary endpoint. Amputation-free survival. Are you alive and do you have the limb we treated? This is the sickest population ever enrolled into a peripheral artery disease trial, including stable dialysis patients, which are basically always excluded from, from, the, uh, from this, the, these types of studies. We had extraordinary results, and this, this, uh, these results will be published in one of the world's great journals next week. So uh, we look forward to you seeing that publication when it comes out. 76% limb salvage, meaning 76% of the patients kept their limbs. 76% of patients went from no healing to healing or completely healed, and 99% technical success, meaning that we were able to train, patients, train sites across 20 sites, across many more investigators to do this procedure successfully. We really deliver what patients want, which is wound healing and pain reduction. Wound healing, you can see, went up over time from zero effectively to 76%. 
and pain dropped by half in six months and continues to drop after that. You ask yourself, well, what does standard of care look like? What happens to these patients if you, we don't do anything with them? We ran another study at the same time of Promise 2 called Clarity, and that looked at 180 patients getting what you would get if you didn't have lymph flow, and we saw 38% amputation-free survival at six months. What does that mean? That means 62% of these patients were dead or amputated within six months. Pancreatic cancer diagnosis looks like a blessing compared to a CLTI, no option diagnosis. 47% of patients were amputated at six months. What does lymph flow deliver? 70% improvement based on a pre-specified propensity stratification that will be published soon and is pre-agreed by the FDA showing high statistical significance, 50% reduction in amputation. 2,000 sites in the US are doing these types of procedures in terms of basic CLTI endovascular and surgical work. Procedure can be performed by interventional cardiologists, vascular surgeons, or interventional radiologists. We're completely agnostic. And there is certainly more pull than push in marketing terms here. We're seeing, that, I mean, these patients are in the cath lab. The, patient, the, the physicians see the patients. The unmet need is clear to everyone involved. This will be a cornerstone therapy and a key di differentiator for providers. Our commercial strategy is based off of at what Edwards did with TAVR. Focus on great outcomes, great outcomes, great outcomes. Go after the first 100 sites, train them up. That will drive advocates and referrals, increased volume, and become a cornerstone practice. We submitted for the, to the FDA about six months ago. We expect approval within the next two months. Our go-to-market team is in place now. We will launch in July latest, we think, unless there's a surprise, which we don't anticipate. First 100 sites have already been targeted, and this flywheel will begin. We have a, a few key enablers for co commercial adoption. We've done a tremendous amount of external market research through an independent group. Robust clinical data, clear mortality and quality of life benefits at what we've seen in the PROMISE-2 trial, 90% intent to adopt among KOLs. In terms of, are, is this going to be impactful for these sites in terms of them being able to build up themselves as a center of excellence? 85% of KOLs say yes. 90% of CFOs and buyers are interested to buy at the suggested case contribution margins. We have clear reimbursement, very attractive physician payment for the procedure. We have interesting uh, DRGs are, and APCs already, uh, already uh, um, identified and in use today. We are selling into the pivotal trial, I mean into our Promise 3 trial for $25,000 per procedure today. Um, and we do have access to NTAP and T TPT. Uh, in fact, we expect end approval for our NTAP next month. So we have several key milestones upcoming, key regulatory approvals, FDA, CE mark later this year, our Shonen approval in Japan will go in in Q4. We're gonna demonstrate commercial traction, expand the team, continue to invest in R&D and clinical, and we will raise capital. We will raise what, what is targeted to be a $75 million growth round this summer. Every investor invested in Limflow today will follow on strongly into that round. So what will we see in the coming days? 80% of patients will continue to be treated with the conventional options that are out there. Some of them on label, some of them off label. I hope they get relief with those products. 20% will have limb flow in option. Today they have nothing and they will have us. And we believe that over time, the right side of this graph will be as valuable or more valuable than everything on the left side of the graph based off of our pricing power and the value we bring to patients in our procedures. So we are on track to become the global leader in limb salvage, solving a major unmet need, unique solution, large accessible patient population, amazing clinical program, best in class clinical team, and great dynamics for a successful global launch with strong pricing reimbursement and therapy adoption in place. So thank you very much.